Hello, and welcome to another session on data mining. Today, we're going to talk about structural risk minimization and its formulation into a regression problem. But before doing that, I'm just going to talk about what we've covered so far. We've covered supervised classification, and you must be bored with me as a fruit seller now, but uh, we've talked about binary classification in which we want to separate two different classes, let's say opals into apples and oranges, and we can extend this concept into multi-class classification, let's say if you have want to classify a given example to three different types we can uh, classify as apple orange or mango and the way we can achieve that is pretty simple we, if we have a binary classifier we can use that and uh, we can develop what is called a one versus all machine learning model in which we can classify an apple versus any other fruit for example orange and mango in this case we can have another classifier called orange versus apple and mango, and then we can have another classifier for the mango class, right? And then we can give a given example to each one of these and identify which one of these gives the highest score and use that to determine what the given object was. So that is called the one versus all model for multi-class classification. Similarly, we can do one against one. We can also try with apple versus oranges as one classifier, apple versus mango as another, and orange versus mango as, uh, as the third one. Where for a given object, we can use these three classifiers and combine their outputs to determine what the uh, given object was. And both of these types of combinations are available within sklearn, so we don't need to worry much about extending, extending a binary classifier into a multi-class classifier. I welcome you to explore that on your own, but essentially we've covered supervised classification. We've talked about support vector machines, and we've, uh, we've looked at that We've broken them down into the three components that we started off with representation, evaluation, and optimization. If you think about a support vector machine, it's essentially a linear classifier that generates a prediction score for a given example, Xi. The feature representation of the example is Xi. And what we essentially do is take a dot product of Xi with a weight vector over here and add a bias term to it. And that is uh, the representation of a support vector machine. This can be converted into a kernelized representation through the use of the representer theorem. Okay, so that's not too, uh, too tricky, right? So we can have this, and then we can substitute it in that, and then we can replace the dot products with kernels to achieve nonlinear classification. We've discussed how it relates to the concept of margin, that these maximize margin, whereas perceptrons don't. And we've also discussed the concept of regularization. So, in, so instead of just minimizing the overall loss function, which is hinge loss in this case, which measures how many, uh, how much, how many examples violate the margin, we also have a term that controls the complexity of the classifier or regularization, and the overall optimization problem for that uh, for, for support vector machine can be written down mathematically like this, and this parameter here over here controls the relative compromise of the margin maximization term and the uh, the error term or the hinge loss function, uh, the sum of hinge loss functions for all examples. So this bit over here is called the empirical loss, loss minimization, whereas this whole thing, including the, the regularization is called structural risk minimization. And we've seen that structural risk minimization achieves better performance in comparison to empirical risk minimization, especially when the data set is really small or the number of dimensions is very large, okay? So we can solve this optimization problem either through gradient descent in which we take the derivative of this optimization function, this whole thing, uh, let's call it L, and you can take the derivative of that with respect to the weight vector, you can take the derivative with respect to the bias, and then we try to minimize this uh, objective function by taking, uh, taking steps opposite to the direction of the local gradient. And we've, we've seen that of, and how that works. We can also use other type of optimization methods such as quadratic programming, we won't be going into too much detail in this module for that, but those methods are also uh, typically uh, machine learning solvers for support vector machines or optimization solvers for support vector machines to use quadratic programming or a variant of that. Uh, but you can so use any optimization technique, even if you have a quantum computer available to you. This is your optimization problem written over here. You can use a quantum computer to solve this optimization problem using quantum annealing, let's say, just, just something for the, from the future. Okay, so you can have uh, what is called a quantum support vector machine, but but let's hold our horses for a sec and let's step back. Uh, if you think of a support vector machine, the underlying concept is essentially structural risk minimization, which says that we should reduce the amount of error we have over the training examples 
the empirical risk minimization component, and then we should also control for regularization so that a small change in the input doesn't produce a very large change in the output. And that is achieved by minimizing this square of the norm of W. And when we reduce the square of the norm of W, we can see that a small change in this input will not lead to a large change in the output because the wave factor norm would be small. However, we also want good error minimization over the training data set. So you can break it down, uh, break this machine learning problem down into these two parts, a regularization component and this empirical risk minimization. In, a, in isolation, neither of them are very effective. If you think about error minimization, if you have a very small amount of data in the training set and you do error minimization without any regularization, you will probably not be able to do much because uh, it won't maximize the margin and you would end up with errors in the training set. Uh, in the in the validation or test set. However, if you do only regularization, then you wouldn't probably get any classifier because if you minimize this norm with respect to W, the W vector is going to become zero, which is a trivial solution of this optimization problem. So we don't want that as well. So this lambda parameter or the C parameter equivalently controls the compromise between these two, okay? So that's pretty much it for support vector machines. I hope you have a good understanding of these. We've also talked about principal component analysis. And today what I'm gonna try to do is to relate it to structural risk minimization. Remember, we talked about, when we talked about support uh, principal component analysis, we uh, discussed it as a dimensionality reduction method or more precisely as a method of identifying the direction of maximum variance in the data. So if your points are these dots, these black dots that you see in, on your screen, then the direction of maximum variance is indicated by this red line that you see over here. And we can see that if uh, I project all of this data onto this line, then the variance of the data is maximized along this direction in comparison to any other direction, uh, which is indicated by these blue arrows over here. And I've given you a tutorial uh, as well that talks about this and it calculates uh, these different directions and calculates the variance and verifies that this red line is actually the line that maximizes the variance, right? Now let's think of principal component analysis in terms of structural risk minimization. Uh, the representation of support vector of uh, principal component analysis is also linear. We're essentially projecting a given example or the feature representation of a given example along a vector, which is W vector over here. And that projection can be expressed as a dot product like this one, right? So we get a new variable after projection. So we call it ZI, for example, that is a scalar, which is a projection of this xi onto this w vector. We've discussed that in detail. You've got a single point, let's say over here, and let's say you've got a w vector, which is this red line, then this is the projection of uh, that point onto this vector. So this is z and this is x, okay? So, so we've got a projection vector onto that. And what we want to do is to maximize the variance. And at the same time, we want to minimize the norm of the W vector. Okay, so this is a, an alternate formulation of the problem of principal component analysis. If we project our data if we, onto this direction, onto the direction uh, indicated by this W vector, which is, uh, let's say if we take this vector and we project everything along that direction, then we see that there is going to be a certain amount of variance in the data. The data has a certain amount of variance uh, before the projection as well, but after the projection, because now we have projected the data onto one dimension, the amount of variance that is captured along that direction is not going to be equal to the overall variance. So what we want to do is to minimize the loss in variance. If the total variance of the data is V, then the variance, uh, the loss in variance can be expressed by this expression on your screen. Now we uh, discussed that we can calculate the variance after the projection. So this is the variance of the data after projection. If X is your data, then we project it. And we can calculate the variance of this data after projection, which comes out to be W transpose CW. For reference, we see uh, the video for principal component analysis. But the main thing here is after we have got a relation that gives us in closed form the variance of data uh, of our data in terms of this weight vector. So if you project your data whose covariance matrix is C, then the variance after the projection is going to be W transpose CW. And the loss in variance is going to be V minus W transpose CW. 
So this is the amount of variance that we lose due to this projection. Okay, and we want to minimize this thing while also minimizing this thing. So we express this expression in as an optimization problem that we want to reduce the loss in variance, which is given by this bit, and that is the loss function for principal component analysis. And we also have a regularization term, which is given over here. And if we take the derivative of this optimization function, then we can we can do that. And if we differentiate it with respect to w and substitute it equal to zero, then what we are left with is this uh, expression, which is cw zero lambda w, which tells me that w is an eigenvector of this covariance matrix C. And we discussed principal component analysis in terms of uh, in terms of uh, eigenvectors already. But this is an alternate view of principal component analysis in terms of structural risk minimization. So as we've discussed, structural risk minimization has two components. One of them is the regularization bit, which is over here. And the other bit is the loss minimization. Now, the loss term in principal component analysis is the decrease in variance due to the projection of the data. So if the overall variance, which is constant, uh, and uh, is, is V, and uh, then if you project all the data onto W vector, the new variance is W transpose CW. We have calculated that. And then the loss invariance is given by this expression. And then what we do is we take the derivative of this thing with respect to W, which comes out to be partial over partial W, lambda by two W transpose W plus V minus W transpose CW. Since the variance of the overall data is a constant, therefore the derivative of that with respect to W is equal to zero. And what we are left with is lambda w due to this derivative minus cw. And if you substitute that equal to zero, this is what you get. And what this says is that the direction that maximizes the variance or minimizes the loss in variance is an eigenvector of this covariance matrix C of the data. So I hope now you are able to relate these two concepts. So principal component analysis is the linear dimensionality reduction method that minimizes the variance. And now you've seen an alternate proof of the same thing. Uh, we started with something completely different. We discussed uh, how Lagrange multipliers methods can be used to derive principal component analysis, but it can also be derived using the method of structural risk minimization. Similarly, if you talk about support vector machines, you can derive support vector machines using Lagrange multipliers, but we haven't done that. What we have talked about is a structural risk minimization formulation of support vector machines, because that is more universal. And now you are able to see that almost every machine learning model would fit into this framework. Uh, this general framework of representation, evaluation, and optimization, as well as this structural risk minimization principle that we have talked about. Okay. So that's, uh, I hope, uh, very useful to you. Uh, if you want to just revise what we want to do when developing a machine learning method is we want to reduce that amount of training error. So we want to learn from the given data set. And we also want to regularize it. And by regularization, we mean that a small change in the input should not produce a large change in the output. And what that essentially does is that it controls the smoothness of the boundary of a classifier or in this case, in the case of, uh, of principal component analysis, it prevents us from uh, projecting onto an arbitrary, or onto a trivial solution of W is equal to zero. So in future, if you encounter a machine learning model, think of it in terms of where is its loss function and where is its, or what is its regularization term. The regularization component stops you from the butterfly effect which means that a small change in the input should not produce a large change in the output, and your loss function prevents uh, you uh, from making too many errors over the training data set. Okay, so that's as the essence of both of these methods, and uh, or all a number of other machine learning methods as well. And next, what we are going to do is we are going to see how this framework of uh, structural risk minimization can be used to solve other problems in machine learning, specifically regression. Thank you.